So we are welcoming Ted from Spinlock, uh, who has been friends, colleagues, uh, beer drinkers uh, for a long, long time. And uh, we have been working together for, what now, 15 years maybe? Uh, yeah, about that, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a, a long time. And um, when it comes to trying to figure out a rope holding issue, we always pick up the phone and call Ted and Spinlock to address um, your question. So it's not this presentation about me, but it's about uh, Ted and Spinlock. So welcome, Ted. Thank you very much, Juan. I appreciate you uh, having me included, and I welcome everybody to uh, the back room of our office where we have lots of really fun things back here, including lots of tubs full of old parts and pieces and um, some stuff that even we've never seen before we keep around here. So it's kind of a unique little place when a customer calls in or sends us a picture and says, hey, I've got this thing, how do I fix it? We can come back here and find a, you know, a little part from 1985 and at least be able to put it in our hand and see what it looks like and um, help people out. So I thought that was an appropriate little place to start here. Um, so one, one of the things that uh, Juan and I were discussing is uh, one of the most common problems that customers, especially at boat shows, but all over, uh, come to us and discuss is um, I put my, my halyard up and my sail doesn't stay up or it slips a little bit or a lot or uh, the clutch isn't engaging the rope in any way or whatever. And it's basically the same conversation we have with many, many, many customers. Um, and the, the largest portion of it that I think most customers forget or, or we're not aware of um, is that the whole rope holding side of your sailboat is a, a system that is uh, set on day one when the boat is built, for example. And on that day, the, the boat manufacturer says, okay, we're going to have this type of a mast and this type of uh, standing rigging and this type of rope is gonna be installed. And so therefore the load for the clutch required is X, let's say 500 kilograms. And so then they come to spin lock and they say for this diameter and this load, what do you recommend? And we suggest uh, clutch to put on the boat and it works great. And then from that day forward, everything changes, <laughs> people, buy new halyards, they buy new sails made out of more modern materials, they replace their old mast maybe with a carbon mast, they replace their wire standing rigging with rod standing rigging, maybe they put an adjustable backstay on that was never there. All of these things change which constantly are adding higher loads to the halyards which then transfer to the clutches that need to hold the load. But yet in 25 years, nothing has changed on their boat with the clutch. So eventually someone will say, I bought a new halyard and the clutch no longer holds it. Um, and so the, that is usually the most common thing that happens. And what we try to get people to understand a little is that, well, when you change that halyard, you now went from, let's say a double braid to a Dyneema core or something to that effect. And um, it doesn't stretch anymore. <laughs> and uh, all the load now when, you know, the boat was designed for 500 kilograms in our original example, now you're putting 750 or more onto the clutch and the clutch is not designed to hold that. So, you know, we, we mostly try and educate people on that portion and how the diameter also affects what they're trying to hold. And if you originally had 12 millimeter line in a clutch and then you change it out to eight millimeters, you've reduced the line size by roughly 40% and your holding capability also goes down by 40%. Um, and sometimes people just don't know that. So, 
you know, before they go and purchase a new halyard or change out their sale material to something different, it's always good to consult uh, your local rigger or just the manufacturer themselves, us, Spinlock, about what they can change before they go and do that. Um, and then there's also lots of things that can be replaced inside the clutches internally to make them hold the rope better that they then put on the boat if it's too late. Um, so there's lots of solutions, but hopefully people don't maybe go down a road too far uh, before realizing they have a problem and they have to completely redesign the clutch area for loads that they're now seeing, which they were maybe not prepared to do. So the speed log is known for the XAS and XDS and so on. Can you, in simple terms, walk us through the smallest one, the XAS, to a yammer when one should be required, uh, especially between the XDS and the XES, was the trade there? Yeah, sure. So uh, the XAS and the XTS, and really the XTS and XCS, exact same clutch. One of them has aluminum side plates and one of them has composite plastic side plates. Other than that, they are virtually identical. The XCS, also has a larger cam size that can fit in it to handle up to 16 millimeter line as opposed to 14 on the XES. Um, that does not necessarily change the rope holding capability of the products. It's more just a look and feel. And you get a lot of maybe higher end boats that are willing to pay a little extra for the alloy side plates. They look a little nicer, they last longer, they're quite a bit more expensive, but in theory, it is the same exact clutch as the XTS. Same internal parts, they can be switched out um, and that, that doesn't really change much, but um, the, the biggest difference I would say is the XAS to TS, that's just a load number. Um, and um, in very simple terms, we try and say right around 30 to 35 feet is like a cutoff for the product. The XAS can handle kind of everything under a 30 foot race boat or 35 foot cruising boat. And the XTS is better for everything 30 foot race boat and above 35 foot cruising boat and above. That, that's kind of the, um, the, the general cutoff that we see in terms of how much load you see on halyards, what size diameters are being used and um, you know, if, say, if a boat builder calls and says, this is what we're doing, it's pretty much guaranteed that those numbers will work. And then there's an upper end for the XTS, which um, is more variable. So when you will go to a yammer, because eventually you're going to run 50, 60 footers, uh, where is yeah. your next cutoff? So that is where it becomes way more variable because yeah. As soon as you go above 35 feet and, and you start looking at a 40 foot boat, you can have everything from a, a modern fast 40, for example, to a really nice, but you know, fairly basic in terms of load holding, like a Beneteau 40, that's just out of the factory. The amount of load going through the halyards on those two boats could be more than double between that. And, um, and so there's a lot more variables. You know, we, we have boat builders that are building upwards of 50 foot boats in upper 40 foot range that are still using the XTS and XCS product with no problem. Um, and, you know, Beneteau is a perfect example of that, and Genoa and Hansi and a couple of the other cruising brands. Um, but then we will equally see customers that buy one of those boats 
And in two years time, they bought new sails, new halyards, replaced the standing rigging, and now all of a sudden they've doubled the loads on the halyards. So it, it, it really is a more variable question once you get in the larger uh, range of boats, because there's so many more factors that can So will you consider the softness of the cover of a polyester double braid be a factor if you put a tight cover on a Dyneema uh, racing halyard, so that change, even though the size of the line remains the same. The way Absolutely. Yeah, they're very different. Uh, uh, you know, Dyneema core um, and just even a straight polyester cover on a line will only stretch a very, very, very small amount. And therefore it transfers almost 100% of the halyard load directly to the clutch. Um, and there's even and there's even different grades of Dyneema. There's basic 50-50 uh, blends of Dyneema and polyester. And then, you know, you've got SK78 and SK99 and heat set SK99 and all, all these grades that go up and up and up. And, and the, the more you put there, basically the higher the load that is being transferred directly from the sail to the clutch. So a polyester double braid road that you can squeeze with your fingers, um, it's very forgiving. And therefore, uh, when you're sailing your nice cruising boat along and you hit a wave, a lot of that shock load gets transferred from your maybe Dacron sail stretches a little and then the halyard stretches a little bit. and um, the standing rigging isn't quite so stiff, and so maybe the mass moves a little. And all of that transfers back into the clutch where it's not pulling on it so far. Um, but then if you change all those things out, you go to a, a heat set Dyneema with a, a blended cover and, um, you know, laminate sails and an adjustable back stay that's keeping the, everything nice and tight. You're, you're transferring quite a lot more load down through the clutch. Now, you also, or Spinlock, uh, have a different uh, rope holding device, the XTX, which looks different and behaves different than your standard rope clutch without being a jammer, correct? Correct, yes, yeah. So just uh, to take a very quick step back, there are, um, two very big differences between clutches and jammers. And a lot of times people use the words interchangeably, but um, if I can find... So a traditional clutch has two parts to it that are moving. It has a static base plate that does not move and it has a cam assembly system that can move a bit. And as the rope comes into the product, the cam comes down onto the base plate and acts as a you know, squishing mechanism and the grip on the cam and the base plate work together to hold the rope. A jammer, which is, you know, our, even jammers can operate with a handle open close, but more traditionally, they are in a static body, which has two working parts that move forward and aft together. And the rope is in the middle and they cannot move with a you know, handle open close. And so they can hold much higher load as they operate together in unison, moving forward to hold the load with some fairly high end uh, plates on either side that can handle the friction and all the rest of it. So, so there are two very different things. Jammers, which you cannot release under load is a good way to put it. And a clutch, which you traditionally can release under load. Um, and, and that just simply has to do with the size boat. As soon as you get bigger and higher loads and uh, bigger rope, you need to go up to a, a bigger 
your product. And it is also less safe to just be opening the clutch and let the halyard drop when you have, you know, three or 4,000 kilos of, of uh, halyard tension on it. That's what the spin lock is well known for. But lately, yeah. in the last couple of years, um, the brand has also migrated into safety and has become pretty much the standard uh, for ocean going uh, inflatable uh, if this. Um, yeah. How, how, what's the story behind it? What triggers? Well, um, it's actually a unique story and uh, it's a pretty cool branding story, I would say, you know, for for um, a very long time, we made metal and plastic pieces that, that were used to operate rope holding mechanisms and maybe rope organization and things like that on sailboats. And that started in the 1960s and lasted uh, right up until around 1998 when um, a friend of a employee came to the company and said, look, I know this sounds crazy, but you make metal and plastic stuff, but I deal with this other world over here of safety and we are really lacking some innovation. Um, you know, you, you could only get a life jacket that was made in one color and completely horrible fitting and the standards hadn't really changed in forever. And, um, and they were not designed for comfort and durability and actual practical use and anything like that. It was, uh, here's the thing that, that checks all the boxes and good luck. Um, and right around the same time, you know, there, there's a lot of things changing in the world. The internet was coming about and um, there's a lot more information. You hear a lot more about accidents that happened and you know, people became a bit more safety conscious. So um, we as a company said, okay, we'll have a look at this and see you know, what could come of it. Um, and through a couple of years of uh, you know, some design and, and um, discussion, we came up with a, our first prototype of a life jacket that actually was a, a harness, a chest harness separately, and a life jacket uh, that attached to it. And I don't know if I have one here anymore. It's been about 25 years, but um, we, we developed that and it was uh, done in conjunction with the company Petzl, which I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of people are aware of from the climbing world. And the person who had come to us was actually from Petzl. They were a sailor, but worked at a rock climbing company. And so we worked with them. We developed a, a mass climbing harness and a chest harness, and then an inflatable life jacket that would strap to it. And that was the first spin lock deck vest, which was designed in 1999 and made available to the market for the first time in 2001. Um, and now 19 years later, we have all sorts of crazy stuff and, um, you know, a full line of safety products that make up well over half of our company. And then that, that allows you to go into the big program. No, like, uh, last time we were together in Newport, it was the Volvo, uh, one of the Volvo stops and yeah, Spinner have spent a lot of time developing the next generation of safety uh, devices for them. Yeah, we, we so, uh, you know, one of the questions you asked just a minute ago about the rope holding as well, and I, I uh, didn't quite get fully into your answer, but a lot of the innovation that comes along from Spinlock is, is you know, we do plenty of stuff on our own, but a lot of times somebody comes to us and says, hey, can you fix this issue? And, um, you know, you had asked me a minute ago about the XTX rope clutch, actually the blue color would be better in contrast. Um, and this, 
is a product along with the deck vest veto that we can also show that simply came from a project oriented problem where we had some fairly high end race boats that uh, were looking for higher load holding with lower weight and uh, easier release mechanism, smaller body, all of these types of things. And, and we saw they were using a different product made from a different company. And they said, this thing's great, it works, but here are the problems we have. It's this long and we need it to be this long. It uh, weighs this much, we need it to weigh less. It does this, we need, so anyway, we would put our designers and engineers on it and say, can you create something? And um, for a long time, we had avoided making a textile based rope clutch because of all these problems that we see in them inherently. And with the innovation of a uh, very um, well-funded race boat team kind of helping support the project along, we were able to come up with a really good solution, which is now readily available to the world. Um, and, you know, it's the same with the life jackets, as you just asked. We, we were contacted by the Volvo Ocean Race about six years ago. And they said, hey, look, we have, you know, these life jacket um, suppliers, they're great, uh, but the, the sailors are really looking for something unique, not something off the shelf, something very different. And so we went down a roughly two year long process with them developing a unique life jacket specifically for the 2000 and, what year were you here? 2014? Uh, Volvo Ocean Race, 14-15 race, and, uh, or was it 15, I don't know, either way, uh, whenever that one was, when they came to Newport for the first time. Yeah, oh, no, that was for the second time, but, uh, but yeah, the, the first time you were involved, um, yeah, the one that I was relating is the, the next one, but, but yeah, I remember all the presentations about how the product have developed from the first edition yeah. to the next edition and so on. Yeah, you go, you go through years of it for, you know, having the sailors sit down. I think one of the, the videos that you have has all that. And you have the guys try it on and sit there and, you know, grind for two hours and say, okay, no, uh, you know, this part we don't really like because we, we bump our knuckles on it all the time. Okay, well, we have to build that down in a little more, move this part up here. The um, harness attachment needs to be flexible so it can get out of the way. You know, okay, we, we don't want anything built here because it gets in the way of the big collars that they wear on um, the jackets and the hoods for the jackets and all the rest of that. So, okay, we have to take the spray hood and build it down into the back of the life jacket. And, um, you know, they wear gloves because it's cold out a lot. And so instead of the little, old crotch straps that we had, they wanted a larger um, single point crotch strap that would stow away when not being worn. And then put a little piece of elastic on here that holds the clip up proud. So when you're looking down, you can see the clip very easily. You know, very little things that we maybe even as designers and, spit and uh, life jacket manufacturers wouldn't necessarily have come up with on our own without these guys sitting here saying, okay, well, I've gone around the world four times and these are the problems I run into. And they're the same problems that the average sailor runs into as well when they're either doing a offshore race or a long distance cruising. And so all of that innovation being brought into um, a product that we then create for the average customer is the, you know some of the luck that we have by being the brand who we are. Yeah, and there's a... Uh an old saying, uh, the office know, like, we really, really hope you never need a life jacket, okay? Yes. But, but if you ever need one, I hope you are wearing the best one that day. Oh, that's a... Uh... Yeah, I mean, we, we equate it to a seat belt in your car, right? You know, it's the most annoying thing to put on and nobody likes it and whatever, but up until you get into a really bad car accident, you're going to be really happy you had that on. Yeah. So, uh, any cool projects going on at the Spinlock right now? 
Yeah, so we, we have um, a few things going on. Obviously, the, the world has uh, slowed down a little bit, so things are, things are a little different right now. But um, the America's Cup is moving forward and very quickly at that. Um, and as we have in the past, we have a very unique relationship with um, what used to be Ben Ansley Racing and is now Team Ineos. Uh, we are developing some very unique uh, safety products and rope holding products. Again, the XTX came from originally innovation with them and a newer generation of that product, which will probably not be a full retail available product because it's just completely unnecessary, but uh, is getting developed for them there. And then the long list of safety concerns for the America's Cup sailor keeps going up and up where we've now developed uh, inherently buoyant life jackets that are built into their, you guys are wearing basically a suit at all times now. And so it's built into the suit. We work with um, it was Henry Lloyd in the past, and I think it's, they still are their technical provider where we provide some of our uh, life jacket intel and they're providing their clothing and uh, fitting intel. And we create a, a product together with them that the sailors will wear. Now they have to have all these cutting apparatus and um, life-saving breathing. Basically you have almost a miniature scuba tank in every sailor's gear. Uh, so that if the boat flips over and they get stuck underneath and they have the ability for short-term air with them and there's all communication stuff with a helmet system that they're now um, using and I am not even being told all of that we are making but uh, it is quite a few. Um, we also have a number of projects going with some of the ocean race teams and um, you know, the development and design that is coming from the Emoka projects is pretty cool. Um, and each one is being secretive about what they are doing and why. And um, so there's some really neat stuff coming. Um, and on, you know, a completely different level, we're working as well with a number of wind farm customers that uh, on our commercial life jackets have really been uh, developing the safety side for the last few years. And you know, wind energy has become a really big business here in the United States, continues to grow um, with, you know, rights being opened up on almost every state on the East Coast. And so we've been developing some life jackets custom to them for a couple of years and continue to do a really fun project. Well, it's always good to see how sailing diverse into other areas um, and apply. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the reasons we got into commercial life jackets is because one of uh, my really good friends is a local harbor pilot. And he would wear his binlock deck vest, climbing up and down the ladder, getting on the, the um, ships. And all the other guys are saying, what is that? Why do I have to wear this crappy thing that I was issued or something? And so, you know, that, that is where even thinking we can develop to the commercial line began. And they're all, most of them are sailors as well. One of the questions that show up on the um, pre-interviews is um, customers concern about uh, the logistics due to the current situation is okay if I order this part and something breaks uh, can I fix it can I get a fix can I get this first mm, I can vouch for a spin lock 99.9 .9 of the time it will be there I'm correct yeah. on that regards yeah so we, we are a very unique company and we, we um we are constantly innovating and, and developing new products and, and redeveloping current products all the time. We make little changes to life jackets and clutches that you would never even know happened this year. It's still the same clutch, but you know we made a little tweak or did this, 
but we guarantee our customers that we will support every product we produce for a minimum of 10 years after it goes out of production. So for example, we have um, old XA parts in here from clutches that we stopped making in you know, the late 90s, but we still have them and we still sell side plates and we still sell the handle that goes along with it. And you know, that product went on roughly 500,000 boats that were produced in the late 80s and 90s. And we still have parts to support that uh, single product. Um, we also develop new products that make sure they're uh, interchangeable with its predecessor. So the XAS that replaced the XA, it has the same exact bolt pattern. It has the same width, it has the same length. So if you replace that one with a new one, you don't have to drill new holes in your boat or do anything like that. Um, we're also very lucky that we have a uh, unique global distribution network. So although everything is made in England uh, on the Isle of Wight, it's brought to all the distribution locations around the globe and sold universally. So you're gonna find the same spin lock replacement part in Australia and in South Africa and in the United States and in Peru and anywhere on the globe. Uh, there are not different manufacturers that are making different items and reselling them. Um, what, any last words for the sailing community? Um, during these days and going forward from a spin lock? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Get back out there. <laughs> no, we, we've, been, we've been very lucky. Honestly, sailing is an incredible um, activity and boating in general. You know, we, uh, spin lock is a very sailing heavy company, but to be honest, we, we sell just as many lift jackets to, to power boaters and paddle boarders and kayakers and all sorts of other um, water related activities. And, and during um, the last eight or nine months, we've really been very lucky with uh, the amount of activity and um, the ability for sailing and boating and water sports to be very uh, compatible with rules and regulations, and social distancing and and um, all the rest of it. So, you know, all I would say is get out there and use your boat and get in the water and, and uh, stay safe and, and enjoy it while you're doing it. Well, I cannot uh, say how much I thank you. And I think everybody learned a little bit today, a little bit more. And I'm sure uh, we will go sailing not today, but maybe tomorrow and then <laughs> Uh, Pretty rain. Yeah. Uh, and uh, more than happy to uh, be one of your long term dealers for the last past 15 years and looking forward for the next 15. So, um, yeah, everybody thank you knows very much. that we will carry the, the full range at any time and um, that we will keep educating ourselves and helping anybody who needs a spin lock. Thanks, Ted. Thank and if you have any other questions for Ted or Spinlock, yes, uh, we will post a link at the end of the video and uh, submit your questions. Thanks a lot, Ted, and be safe. Take care.